Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer on this Wednesday, the 3rd of February. With a hat and a coat, it's a lovely day to be outside. Nice sunshine and uh, it's, it's a great day. Although the sun is mainly uh, to my side, uh, not the best of situations, but it certainly works for us. Today is the Feast of St. Ansgar, Archbishop of Hamburg and Bremen, an apostle to Denmark and Sweden, who died on this date in 865. We'll be speaking more of him a little later. It's also in the week of the fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. Today is National Carrot Cake Day. If you enjoy such things, I certainly do. And it is Golden Retriever Day. A lot of history on this date. On this date in uh, 1468, Johannes Gutenberg invented movable type and the printing press. He died at the age of 70. Uh, was born, was died on this date. In 1480, Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan was born in Trazo Monte e Alto Duro, Portugal, uh, passed away in 1521. We had a chance to visit the uh, huge navigator's monument, some 17 stories tall, uh, in Belém, Lisbon, Portugal. What a beautiful and fascinating sight. In 1809, on this date, German composer and pianist Felix Mendelssohn was born in Hamburg, Germany. He died in 1847, and in 1815, the world's first commercial cheese factory was established in Switzerland. We had the opportunity to visit a Gruyere cheese factory in, in Switzerland a few years ago. In 1863, author Samuel Clemens first used the pen name of Mark Twain in a Virginia City newspaper, The Territorial Enterprise. That name, Mark Twain, uh, means Mark number two and was a Mississippi. Mississippi River term. It was the second mark or line on uh, the pole that was used to measure depth, and it signified two fathoms or 12 feet, which was a safe depth for operating a steamboat. As a personal point of interest, my great-grandfather, Truman Gary, worked the steamboats of the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. In this date in 1882, circus owner P.T. Barnum bought his world-famous elephant Jumbo. Sadly, sadly, Jumbo died the 15th of September, 1885, just three years later, when he was struck by a railway train in nearby St. Thomas, Ontario. His name became synonymous with supersized products. Jumbo, everything from laundry detergent to breakfast cereal. And on this day in 1959, a date that has become known as the day the music died, a small charter plane crashed near Clear Lake, Iowa, killing musicians Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and J.P. Richardson, known as the Big Bopper, and the pilot. All of those musicians were so young, Buddy Holly, just 22, Richie Valens, 17, and J.P. Richardson, 28. I just think of what they might have added to their musical repertoire if they had been granted a few more years of life. And in 1960... The movie La Dolce Vita, directed by Federico Fellini and starring Marcello Mastroianni and Anita Ekberg, had its film premiere in Italy. And one last musical item in 1967, Jimi Hendrix recorded Purple Haze. I think now we will turn to our prayers. O Lord, I call upon you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our psalm for today will be verses from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord has set his throne in heaven, and his kingship is dominion over all. 
Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding, and hearken to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you servants, you ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all you works of his, and all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And our prayer, God of infinite mercy and forgiveness, by the cross and resurrection of Jesus your Son, wash away our sins and deliver us from our infirmities of body and spirit, that we may live with him his risen life, to the praise and glory of your holy name. Amen. We return now to our readings from the Gospel of Mark. We begin in the sixth chapter. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, Where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Matthew gives us an even more uh, extended account of Jesus in his hometown, uh, being driven to the edge of town and almost pushed off a cliff. It was certainly not a warm welcome he received there. If you no longer live in your hometown, you may think what it's like to go back and visit. Sometimes they've made so many changes you barely recognize the place. That's certainly been my experience. Uh, new expressways put through, roads that used to dead end now continue to someplace else, and so it goes. Uh, our hometown sometimes, they remember us as children, as kids in school. Uh, what we've become now is different than what we were then. And so Jesus was not well received, yet they were also amazed at the power because they had remembered him as someone working in his father's carpentry shop. They knew his brothers and sisters. They just couldn't believe the power that he was showing. And he said, well, uh, prophets are not without honor except in their own hometowns and among their kin and in their own house. And so he was able to lay his hands on a few and cure them, but not that much. And he was amazed at their unbelief. If Jesus were come to visit us in our hometown or where we now live, would he be amazed at her unbelief or would he be honored by the great belief that we have? Would we be shocked to see him or excited to see him? Would we understand the deeds of power that he was doing, or would we want to question them for one reason or another? As I said a couple of days ago, I am one who is very reluctant to try to explain away Jesus' miracles, to somehow say, well, it just happened because of this, or people misunderstood what was happening. In a few days, we will be reading of his feeding of the 5,000. People try to explain that away, saying, well, the boy started sharing his food, and then everybody was willing to share. No, I think something miraculous happened there. And every time that he feeds us with his precious body and blood in the Holy Eucharist, I firmly believe that something miraculous also happens there. Well, today, as I said, we are remembering and honoring St. Ansgar, and I wanted to share just a little bit about him. Uh, St. Ansgar, spelled with a G, is also known as St. Anskar, spelled with a K, or even just Oscar. He was born about September the 8th in 1801 in Amiens, France. He became an archbishop, first of Hamburg, and then later Bremen was added to his archbishopric, and he became known as the Apostle of the North. And to this day, he's a patron saint of Christianity in Scandinavia. His mother died when he was quite young, and as a result, he was brought up in Corby Abbey, not far from his birthplace. And Anscar was not originally much into spiritual things until, while still a boy, he saw a vision of his deceased mother at the side of the Virgin Mary. 
and from that point on he devoted himself to spiritual matters. In his 20s he became a missionary, first to Denmark and then to Sweden, where he met, met with mixed success among the native pagan population. In 1831 he was appointed first as Archbishop of Hamburg and later Bremen. Political divisions in the Frankish lands after the death of Louis the Pious and the sack of Hamburg by the Danes dealt him severe setbacks in the early 840s. Later, he was able to establish amical relations with some of the Scandinavian monarchs, his former enemies, and succeeded in establishing a number of churches. He died in Bremen, Germany, on this date, the 3rd of February, 865. After Ansgar's death, his successor, Rimbert, preserved several of his visions together with a brief biography of him. Although his churches in Scandinavia were later destroyed by pagan reaction, Ansgar's saintly memory preserved a permanent legacy for him. And so on this date, the 3rd of February, in Catholic, Orthodox, Lutheran, and Anglican churches, his feast day is celebrated when he is remembered as the Apostle to Scandinavia. And now let us turn to our prayers. First, a collect for St. Ansgar. Almighty God, Almighty and everlasting God, you sent your servant Ansgar as an apostle to the people of Scandinavia and enabled him to lay a firm foundation for their conversion, though he did not see the results of his labors. Keep your church from discouragement in the day of small things, knowing that when you have begun a good work, you will bring it to fruitful conclusion. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the prayer for this week. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Creator of the universe, watch over us and keep us in the light of your presence. May our praise continually blend with that of all creation until we come together to the eternal joys which you promise in your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your light, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I invite you in a moment of silence to bring your prayers and concerns to this time together. And now each of us in our own language, we offer together those words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you and those that you love and those that you would pray for, today and always. Amen. Go now in peace, the God of peace go with you. Amen. Thank you for joining me with these prayers. It's just nice to be outside again. It would be nice to have a few more of these, uh, of these lovely days along the way. God bless you. Good night.